everyone, so I woke up super early this morning because apparently the birds are aware it's spring as well and they just keep being really really noisy every morning and I wake up at like half past five when I don't need to. So I was awake super early and I had a little bit of extra time this morning before I had to go out so I thought I would film my kind of current spring makeup look and it's a very simple easy look as are all my looks, very neutral, nothing crazy but I thought you might be interested in seeing the products I'm using. So I'm going to start off with primer and I'm going to use the Cover FX Mattifying Primer just because I'm using quite a dewy foundation and I find that if you've got oilier skin that's the key to making the dewy foundations last and look nice. So I'm just going to apply this kind of on the centre of my face mainly and then spread it out and it really is kind of a nice silicone based primer. I really like silicone based primers, I feel like they smooth out any imperfections but I know a lot of people are kind of not really that into it. But as you can see I've kind of got a lot of redness in my skin this morning and a lot of um, just little bumps and things like that, I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's just because of the change of weather, it's like a little bit of an allergy. So for foundation, I'm going to use my Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum. And I've got it in the shade 56. The label says 53 because um, for some reason I picked it up and I must have been testing shades and I put the wrong label on. But I know for a fact it's number 56 because 53 would be way too light. So I've just got a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm going to just start applying this onto the centre of my face and working outwards. That red mark is just awful. And the brush I'm using is one of the Nashway brushes from the foundation set. And it's just this kind of like nice domed um, sort of buffing brush I suppose you'd call it. But it's a really nice brush because you can kind of get into all the little areas. But it's got the same sort of amount of pressure as a regular buffing brush. So I like to just sort of take this foundation everywhere, buff it in a thin layer and I always think you know with foundation start off thin and you can always add more because there's nothing worse than a really thick cakey face filled with foundation. I definitely need a little bit more coverage this morning and that was me thinking that because I gave myself a facial last night that my skin would be all nice this morning but clearly not. I've just had these little weird bumps um, kind of here and here lately and they keep kind of disappearing and then coming back and I'm not sure what it is because I'm not using anything new but hopefully I can cover them up and hopefully they will disappear soon. I'm going to go in with some concealer and I'm going to use the 17 Stay Time Concealer. I am on the market for any concealer for my face. I don't kind of, I'm not looking for an eye under eye concealer, but a face one, I really want to um, find a great one because I'm just never really that impressed by them. So let me know your recommendations down below of great kind of um, facial concealers. I don't like the collection one on my face because it breaks me out for some reason. I can use it under my eyes fine, but on my face it just doesn't seem to agree with me. So I'm just going to apply that onto the red area and blend that in. I like this one, I just feel like the coverage is a little bit um, not enough. And then onto that little blemish. Which is just the most annoying thing to cover up because it's kind of like just a little raised bump that you can't really cover up. That's kind of alright. And I wish there was something that was so full coverage that it would cover my pigmentation, but I should be so lucky. Um, then for under eye concealer, I'm going to use two because this is kind of the combo that I've been doing lately and it's been working really well, I think. I'm going to use a little bit of the Laura Mercier Secrets Concealer in shade number three, which is just this kind of peachy tone. Just under the really dark areas first. So just kind of on the bits where you get super, super dark. So the kind of inner bits. I know everyone pats their concealer on with their ring finger, but I just find it more comfortable using my larger fingers. And then I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer just to kind of conceal all over and brighten. And I really like this concealer. I think it's a really nice under eye concealer. So thank you all for recommending it to me because I am really, really into it. Just wish it had a little, little bit more coverage, but apart from that, I think it's great. I'm going to buff that in with the Zoeva Concealer Buffer Brush. Just really make sure it's kind of evenly distributed, and then I will just kind of blend it in a little bit with my hands, because I feel like 
that always gives the nicest finish. Just tap it in like that. Then I'm just going to use a little bit of a kind of highlighting product, um, like a highlighting concealer. And where have I put it? That's an interesting question. Hmm. It appears. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm going to use the Make Believe Enhance kind of brightener just on my cupid's bow area and under my brow bone and this just helps to kind of give your face a little bit of a lift and a bit of an enhancement and then I always like to just go in with this kind of beauty blender-esque type of thing can't even remember where this was from it's not an original beauty blender and when it's kind of dry I don't like to wet it because I feel like then it just makes the foundation kind of look a bit weird but just to kind of buff everywhere and make sure that you've got no weird creases I seem to always get creasing with my foundation around here I don't really want that then I'm just going to powder quickly and I'm going to use the miners fresh face powder this is in shade number uh, it's not a number it's called soft sand I'm going to use this on my mac kabuki it's the 182 and just start on my forehead, mattify the area, and press it in. I feel like that's the best way to just kind of get your foundation to stay in place. It's not to kind of brush the powder everywhere. It's just press it in, and it gives a much more flawless finish as well. Like so. Then I'm going to go in with bronzer. And for bronzer, I'm going to use this one right here, which I'm really enjoying at the moment. And it's by... Um, N NV makeup or NV color sorry they're called and it's just this kind of triple toned um, bronzer so you get a kind of dark contoury shade a warmer shade and a highlighty shade what I've been doing is just swirling my brush in all over and I'm really into this brush as well this is by Crown Brushes I've got a review of some of their stuff coming up but I like to just kind of swirl it in and do a kind of three motion I don't contour with this because I've got another contour that I really like as I'm sure you all know I just kind of take it all over and I like to always take it under my jawline as well just to kind of connect the colour and down my neck that's super super important to take your bronzer down your neck I think then I'm going to go ahead and contour of course and I'm using my beloved um, MUA matte bronzer in shade number four you know I love this and I'm just using it an angled brush I don't know what brand this is but any angled brush will do kind of they all pretty much do the same thing so I just suck my cheekbones in and take it down the hollow I've done a full video about how to contour and slim down your face if you want to check that out but there's lots of different ways of doing it and it all depends on kind of the placement of the product and it also depends on the shape of your face as well I feel like that's something that's very very important because if you've got a very slim face for example you might want to do it a little bit differently and I'm just going to blend it out with my bronzer brush then I'm going to go in with brows so for brows I'm just going to brush them up so into place a little bit and I'm quite happy with my brows at the moment I feel like the kind of outer parts are finally growing in a little bit so I brush them up and then I'm going to go ahead and use my benefit gimme brow which I'm obsessed with I think it's just the easiest most convenient fantastic brow product um, so it's just a basic little brow spoolie type of thing like a little brow mascara and you just brush it through and it helps to add texture and fill in the gaps it's amazing so I'm just gonna brush this through my brows I like to kind of concentrate more in the middle because that's where I've got the most gaps and then kind of carry it through the end I don't like to kind of have too much at the front of my brow and then the same on the other side I don't add too much because I have got quite dark brows um, and this is the darker shade as well but that's what it looks like and I've also just noticed I've got a little brush hair right there so that's kind of how the brows look. Then for eyes, I'm going to use the Soap and Glory Lid Shadow, the Daily. The cream shade, just all over my lids as a primer. This is what I've been using lately and it's really helped to keep my eyeshadow in place because it's been creasing a lot. And I'm actually using a new eyeshadow palette that 
I bought because I'm planning on doing kind of like a beauty dupes video, drugstore and high-end dupes. And I bought this thinking, oh, you know, everyone says it's a good dupe for the Naked palette. I'll try it. I wasn't expecting anything. I'll be honest, I was expecting to not like it. But I really like it. And it's the MUA Undressed palette. And I think it's so good the shadows are just beautiful and the shimmer they've got in them is lovely and i just think they're great i'm going to use this one right here which has been one of my most used ones it's kind of like a sh more shimmery version of max naked lunch so i'm just going to use that on a flat little shadow brush all over the lid blend in that sip and glory that's what you get for doing it without a mirror And the colour payoff on these, as you can see, is just beautiful. Really, really densely shimmer, shimmered. And it's just amazing. I'm really, really impressed by these. And I think I'm going to get a couple of others just to try them because they're so inexpensive. They do some bright ones as well that um, look quite promising. Not that I'd really use them, but they looked very, very nice. So I'm just going to put this as kind of like a wash of colour. And I've been using this all the time and then I'm going to go in with a kind of smaller brush and shall I do shimmer or matte I kind of have just been playing around with this palette to be honest so I haven't had like a set color that I've used all the time but I'm going to use this one right here so the looks kind of not too much but the two matte shades you get in here are quite nice even though I think the shimmers are where this palette kind of shines so just take that this is a um brush from crown brushes as well and then I'm going to take a little blending brush also from crown brushes and just blend that out so you just get a subtle bit of definition but it's still daytime appropriate and I think in the spring especially you really don't want to be wearing tons and tons of um, eye makeup you want to keep the look looking very very fresh that's kind of key the spring makeup I feel is to just keep it looking very fresh and pretty rather than looking really done. So I'm just gonna blend that out. And that's pretty much it for the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some mascara. I won't film me, me doing this because that would probably be really boring for you and I'm sure you all know how to apply mascara. But I'm gonna use the Clinique um, Lash Power Feather. My eyes mascara. done, I've put a couple of coats on and then just a small, small amount on my lower lashes but it's not a very obvious lash look. It kind of almost could look like you've got just naturally really long lashes. It's not an obvious mascara look which I think is nice during the kind of spring and summer months. Then for blusher, I'm going to use this Clinique blush, and it's their, one of their cheek pops in Ginger Pop. Really, really, really beautiful. I love the packaging of these. I think it's just amazing. But I'm going to use it on a kind of angled brush. This, again, is from Crown Brushes. And I'm just going to apply this into the apples of my cheeks. But kind of the upper apple, because I've got a chubby face. And I think it's just more flattering. So that's my blusher. And then I'll go in with a little highlighter, I think. I'm going to use this eyeshadow by Miners. And this was a product I loved last year, and I've kind of rediscovered it. And it's called Stardust. And I'm just going to use this on a little... Um, this is sort of like a blusher brush, but it's not very dense. Just buff that along my cheekbone. Just to create a bit of a healthy sheen. Then for lips, I'm going to use a product that I've been really into lately, but first the Essential Lip Liner. And this one's by Model Co, I think. Yeah, and it's called the Illusion Nude Lip Liner. And then on my lips, just because it sort of mirrors the shade of the blush, I'm going to use this um, lipstick by The Body Shop. And this is one of their, um, what are these called? The Colour Crush lipsticks. And they're just like a kind of bright lip shade in a sheer juicy form. They're lovely and this colour is just so beautiful. So as you can see, the shade in the bullet, it looks kind of so much darker than what you actually get. And... They feel beautiful on the lips, they don't dry out your lips and they're just a really, really lovely, pretty little pop of colour, but not too much. 
So that's it, that's my kind of everyday spring makeup look. I hope you enjoyed this and as I said, I'd love to know your concealer recommendations and what products have you been using during spring? Have you kind of been changing up your makeup look a little bit and going for something a bit fresher? I'll also always mist my face with a little bit of the Evian spray just to get rid of any powdery residue. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big, big thumbs up if you did and I will see you in the next one.